I'm sure by now you've already seen the wild AI features that Photoshop has added, but in this video, I'm gonna go over tips I wish I knew about Photoshop's AI features. So let's dive in. What's up, it's Annie Filicotti. Now let's dive into the new Photoshop AI features and what you need to know before using it. Now, of course, the most popular thing you can do with this AI is remove things from your photo or quickly add things to your photo but you can also use it to extend the frame of any existing photo, which is a huge feature. So all you have to do to do that is go to the crop tool and then we can add areas on the outside of our photo here. You can see how I'm increasing the width. And now we have a white area here on the side. Now we're just gonna make a selection here and then we're gonna invert the selection. There's a button here for it, invert selection. And you can see here, we're selecting the white areas on the outside and then we can hit generative fill. And we can leave this blank and hit generate. Basically leaving a blank is gonna tell Photoshop to kind of use the surrounding area and figure out what should be in that area of the photo. So ideally in this situation, we're gonna see the hand kind of here and then the pink wall in the background. So let's see what it does. Look at that, perfect. And if you don't like the results, of course they have multiple selections for you to choose from. And in this situation, they're all pretty similar, but you can barely tell that this is AI generated, which is really incredible. Now, one mistake that I see people make when using Photoshop AI is using verbs. Now, what you actually need to do is use nouns. So for example, I've seen people highlight something and say, make her hair blonde, make this, that. You have to just use a basic noun. So for example, you could just write blonde hair or describe exactly what you want in simple terms. For example, in this photo, you could write make this orange, but it's gonna really confuse what's going on here. And you're gonna wanna actually give a description of what you actually want. So for example, orange ice cream. I wanna generate. So anytime that you're generating something, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're as descriptive as possible and using nouns mainly. And you could see here, it looks like sorbet on the top of our ice cream here. And another small tip is anytime you don't like a result, you can just hit the generate button again and it'll give you more variations to choose from. You can see it's actually using an actual orange on there now. Now, the one thing that I think is truly unique about this tool is it uses the actual image as reference. For example, in this here, you can see we have a reflective area on the water here and Photoshop will actually know that that's supposed to be a reflection as you can see here. It's truly incredible what this can do. Now, one crazy thing is that you can actually use opacity. Now, what does this mean? Let me show you. You can see here, I have a picture of underwater. So I'm gonna highlight here, and I'm just gonna type in fish. Now you can see it comes up with fish, but it looks very unrealistic, and it doesn't actually look like the fish are in water, as you can see here. So I'm gonna delete this layer here. So now I'm actually gonna use the quick mask feature to select an area that's a 40% opacity. Now what this means is instead of selecting an area, it's actually gonna select the area, but only some of the opacity of it. So let me just show you what that means. So I'm gonna hit quick mask here. You can also hit Q and then we can select an area. And I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit fill, and I'm gonna do foreground color, and then I'm gonna do opacity 40%. And then I'm gonna hit Q again. You can see here when I hit delete, it's actually selecting everything but this 40% area. So let's invert the selection, and you can see it warns us that we're not actually gonna see the little marquee because the area is actually under 50% opacity, so let's hit okay. And just so you can see what we're selecting, I'm gonna hit delete here. And you can see here, it's like a 50% opacity in the middle of the photo. So I'm gonna undo. So right now we have it selected, even though you can't see. And I'm gonna hit generative fill and I'm gonna type in fish. So you can see here how much more realistic our results are, especially when it knows the context of the water and everything like that. Definitely an important thing to know, especially if you're at trying to add something that's in between a layer of like rain or water or things like that. Definitely a really cool feature. Now, another important thing to know is that the generative area is actually 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels spread over the area that you're trying to generate fill. So what does that mean? Um, let me just show you here. I'm going to crop out of this photo here. And I'm gonna do a selection here, and then I'm gonna do invert. So we're selecting the white area, and then I'm gonna fill. So basically what this is doing is it's gonna use an about 1000 by 1000 generative area, and then stretch it out over that whole area. So if you were trying to print this photo, for example, it's probably gonna look really bad in those generative areas. So let me show you what I mean. So now that it's done generating, you can see it looks pretty good, but if we zoom in, our real photo here looks uh, sharp and then our generated area is really low res. Now, how do you get around that? You basically can generate areas in little 1000 by 1000 selections and that's how you get really high quality results. Now, the way you can do this actually is to bring up the canvas size that's weighted on the right here and then we can add 1024 over here. 
And you can see here we've added a 1024 pixel buffer. So now I'm gonna select, it's gonna be a little bit uh, larger than that, but let's select and do it anyway here. And then I'm gonna do a generative fill, hit a blank. Now this process of course will take a lot longer, but your quality of what you get is gonna be way higher. So here's one here. Um, let's see what it goes. We'll do this one here. And now let's do another one here. And I'm holding shift while I do this to keep it a square. And we're gonna generate again. Now after we generate this one, I can zoom in and show you the quality difference. Now let's zoom in. And you can see now you can't really tell the difference as much versus the generative area. This is really good to know if you're trying to have the highest quality possible with this feature. Now, one other thing that you might not know is you can actually stitch photos together using this. So you can see here, I have a really cool artwork here and I'm gonna expand the frame over here. And I actually have a photo taken the other way. So I'm gonna move it over on this side of the frame. And then I'm just gonna select the middle here and I'm gonna generate fill. It's really cool. You basically can stitch any photo together. Of course, the results will uh, change based on how large of an area you do. If you try to merge two things that look really different, really close, it's gonna be really weird. But if you give it lots of room, it'll actually come out with some really realistic results. Let's see how it comes out here. And that looks pretty good. And then of course you can just keep going. Let's, uh, let's pull it out even more here. And I'm, I'm gonna select everything. And I'm gonna do an invert and generative fill. Let's see how this looks. And of course you can select uh, different versions here. But overall, you can see how realistic this looks. Uh, and then if we remove what we have, you can see our base photos and what we've extended to the frame around it. And another thing that you probably also wanna use this for that you might not have thought of is to remove Taurus. So you can see here, we have a person standing here. I'll highlight, highlight them. I'll hold shift and we'll highlight the other person here. And then we'll highlight the other person. Of course, you could do this before with content aware fill, but now we have this new AI way. So let's generate and see what it does. And you can see here, we have near flawless results. It looks great and it's a great way to remove Taurus from your photo. And of course, like we talked about before, there is a resolution limit. So you're getting really a image stretched out over everything. So you can see here where we remove this person, it looks sharper on our actual photo and then less resolution in the generated area. So if you actually want the maximum amount of quality, you're probably gonna remove every person individually and generate each of those frames. I hope you enjoyed these Photoshop AI tips. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see ya.